All right, so here's the deal. I love the first Tomb Raider. I think it's a timeless classic that has aged very well. I could rave about its excellent sense of isolation, captivating atmosphere, creative level design, and clever puzzles. If you're interested, the link to my review is in the description. With the recent release of Tomb Raider 1 through 3 remastered, it's a great time to revisit these classic titles with quality of life improvements. After finishing the first game and loving it, I was eager to jump right into Tomb Raider 2. Unfortunately, I ended up very frustrated with it, and I think the first game is much better. The first gripe I have is how combat became the main focus. Tomb Raider 1 is more of an adventure game with the emphasis on platforming and puzzle solving. Combat is restrained and limited to creatures and boss fights, though admittedly it does ramp up in the second half. It rarely took over the game and allowed the exploration and atmosphere to stand out. In Tomb Raider 2, the first level gets this right, as you fight off creatures and avoid traps, and it's terrific. You're also encouraged to go off the beaten path. Before taking the zip line, you can climb down to the bottom and discover not one, but two T-Rexes. In my mind, I thought this was a taste of what the rest of the game would be like. Yet, in the next region, the game takes a sudden turn and becomes a third-person shooter, and it's like this for most of the game. To be clear, I'm not opposed to Tomb Raider expanding on combat. I reviewed both Tomb Raider Legend and the 2013 reboot, which are combat heavy, and I had fun with them, but exploration is what put Tomb Raider on the map. What's even more baffling to me is just like Tomb Raider Legend, you can explore Lara's home, which includes a maze puzzle to unlock her treasure room, and it's one of the best parts of the game. Along with the first level and the previous game, you had the formula right there, so why would you abandon it? Anyway, this may be a subjective view, and you may prefer the combat. But you have to admit, it's jarring how much of a departure 2 is from 1, especially when playing them back to back. What's worse are the difficulty spikes in the combat. You're frequently bombarded by enemies, both humans and creatures. They tend to spawn out of nowhere, and several of them are bullet sponges, even when using powerful weapons. The human enemies have pinpoint accuracy, and it's almost impossible to avoid getting hit. Part of your arsenal are two-handed weapons that don't fire consistently unless you're standing still, which proves problematic in crowds and when your other weapons are low on ammo. What's supposed to be presented as a challenge ends up being more of a chore. The difficulty spikes are also apparent in the level design and lead to various trial and error moments. Sliding down ramps led to my death because I didn't know to go down backwards to grab a ledge. Launch pads had me stuck in a loop, or in mid-air with nothing to grab because I approached them from the wrong angle. Multiple Maria Doria levels start underwater, including in the dark, and you have a short amount of time to figure out where to go before you drown. The Temple of Xion has a barrage of traps, several of which kill you in one hit, including a clumsy climbing challenge at the end of it. All of these moments led to many cheap deaths, and made the game a slog to play through. You better believe I spam the save option just to avoid having to replay these sections. As if these issues weren't bad enough, the final straw for me is the game's length. These levels are simply too big, too long, and too drawn out, drastically hurting the pacing. Besides the bullet sponge enemies and trial and error moments, the platforming and puzzles are needlessly complex and require more steps to complete than they should. Why are there ladders that are several stories high when Lara's climbing speed is already slow? Why do you have to run between the same areas multiple times just to open a door or pick up a key? Why do you need to ride the same zip line or climb the same tall ladder twice? Why do you need to collect circuit breakers to put out fires also you can move one crate to reach a high area? In addition, multiple levels needed to be tightened up or removed altogether. Why are there six levels involving an offshore rig and the Maria Doria? Why do others like the Opera House and Monastery take over an hour to complete? Even something as simple as a sprint button could have helped a little bit. Oddly enough, vehicles can speed up when pressing the action button, so why can vehicles speed up but not Lara? I could go on and on, but hopefully you get my point. One more gripe, which honestly is a bit silly, but I might as well include it. 
In the Opera House level, one of the objectives is to find a circuit board to install in a panel to open the door. Where do you find this circuit board? Underwater. Then you plug in this soaking wet part into the electric panel. It still works and you don't get electrocuted. Like, who came up with this? As I said, a bit silly, but I just had to get that out of my system. So, Tomb Raider 2. I really wanted to like this game, but the various issues cannot be ignored. It ultimately feels like a product of a troubled development, and turns out that's exactly what happened. Thanks to publisher IDOS Interactive seizing creative control and demanding annual releases, there was only about an eight-month window to make the game. There was a lot of crunch, low morale, and creative differences, all leading to key team members leaving during production. And it's a shame because there really are some great moments and ideas here, but unfortunately they're marred by invasive combat, too many trial and error moments, and tedious level design. Not even the remaster, with its updated visuals and higher frame rate, can save this one. There was definitely potential for this to be great, and it leaves me wondering how much better it could have been if the developer was given more time.